Only 300 will ever be built. And to buy one will cost you over a million pounds. It can accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 2.5 seconds. With a top speed of more than 250 miles an hour. And incredibly, it can break from this speed to a standstill in less than 10 seconds. This iconic brand is brought back to life and into the 21st century. The Bugatti Veyron, unlike any car ever made. Nothing about this car is normal. Its engine cranks out an amazing 1,001 horsepower, nearly twice as much as most other super sports cars. It has a top speed of over 250 miles an hour. Few other supercars come close. The Bugatti Veyron is a true supercar. The Veyron's brakes come from the same company that makes brakes for jumbo jets. And it's a car with light speed sensors to precisely control its own wing. A wing that helps keep the Veyron on the ground. Because this car goes faster than a jet on takeoff. So to build it, automotive engineers had to work alongside aerospace experts. At the end, it, it, it was agreed that there was a small team of people. Few of them were working on other car projects before, but a lot of them came from outside and were just excited about this extreme project. And that was absolutely necessary. I think otherwise we would have stopped in the first, first three months and said, well, it's not, we can't do it. The Veyron bears the initials of Ettore Bugatti, the father of the Italian family that built unusual high-performance cars between 1909 and 1947. In 1998, Volkswagen bought the rights to the brand. Two years later, the decision was made to build a car that would have 1,001 horsepower and a top speed of over 250 miles an hour. The way this project started, it was very clear from the beginning that you could not use normal solutions. Normal solutions would never have brought this result on four wheels to a positive end. The first challenge is monumental. How to build an engine with 1,001 horsepower. An engine with five times the power of a normal car. This powerful engine needs to have two very different personalities. One where it's a beast on the racetrack. The other as a gentle giant that can be driven around town every day. And this engine you can race with and you can also drive it uh, 
at idling speed through the town. And in the beginning, I think a lot of people did not believe that this could be done at all. It takes engineers five years to find the answer. They decide to bolt together two V8 engines and create one giant 16-cylinder monster. The new engine is called a W16. The W engine, the two Vs. The W16 engine has more horsepower and uh, a higher acceleration than an S car. That engine is built in Salzgitter in Germany. Volkswagen Salzgitter is one of the biggest engine producing plants in the world. In one corner of this huge factory sits a small room where eight specialists build the W16 for the Bugatti Veyron. The Veyron engine is an um, absolutely handmade engine. Hand assembly starts with hand delivery of engine parts. The parts are carried inside custom padded cases as if they were fine jewelry. And these parts have been machined out of solid titanium, a material you might expect to find in an aeroplane, not a car. One thing which we share with airplanes is that we use the same material. There has been used titanium uh, where other manufacturers use steel. The W16 is built with more than 3,500 parts, nearly twice as many as the average car. Each of its 16 pistons are carved from blocks of aluminium. Every bolt is tightened by hand. And then checked by computers. It takes a week to assemble one engine. Building the Veyron's engine is a technological challenge. Testing it proves to be even tougher. In 2001, at a tiny workshop in Wolfsburg, workers run the engine at full throttle for the very first time. No one really knows what will happen. This location is a little bit a historic site because uh, this location we reached at first the 1001 horsepower. The engine actually produces 3000 horsepower. Two thirds of that energy is heat. When the engine first runs at full power, it almost burns down the building. In the beginning, uh, this test stand here was a normal one. And the first experience we had was that the exhaust system on the roof was totally burning down. And at full load, uh, we generate waste energy that could keep 100 family homes warm in winter. The exhaust gas is so hot that, in an early road test, a six-foot flame shoots out the back of the car. The test crew detected that the exhaust gas was hot enough at 200 miles per hour to reignite when it uh, came in contact with the ambient air. So there was a, a six-feet flame shooting out of the exhaust system. Of 
course, nobody gets close enough uh, to a vehicle when you're cruising along at 200 miles per hour, but uh, still, <laughs> it's, it's illegal. The solution is to redesign the car's exhaust using a tested technology. We decided to use titanium for our exhaust system. It's also used for aerospace. But they also need to reduce the extreme heat inside the engine. So they design a radical new cooling system. In the Bugatti, everything had to be taken one step further. A single radiator is handcrafted so it has 600 separate grooves for water to flow through. 30 separate plates are stacked in a jig. It's all welded together, polished, and then the unit is pressure tested to make sure there are no leaks. It takes 15 hours to build one radiator. And each Bugatti Veyron has 10. A unique engine will need a unique transmission. So, for Bugatti engineers, the next challenge is critical. How do they make the Veyron one of the fastest shifting cars in the world? The Bugatti Veyron has a top speed of more than 250 miles per hour. I think it, it, it had to find an own class, an own, an own league of super sports cars. With 16 cylinders sucking in more fuel and air than any other car on the road, you can be sure to hear the unique sound of a Veyron before you see it. The car has remarkable acceleration. The Veyron can reach 250 miles an hour in less than 17 seconds. That's faster than the takeoff speed for a jumbo jet. And at 180 miles an hour, the car's still accelerating hard. Transmission enables the car to uh, accelerate without lack of power. This is a very special feeling. You just feel the acceleration performance without any interruption, without any stop. It never stops. The transmission shifts in about uh, 150 milliseconds, which is just the same as a blink of your eye. Bugatti's engineers come up with a transmission touch of genius. The Veyron has two transmissions built into one. They call it a double clutch transmission. You have uh, two input shafts, one for the even gears and one for the odd gears, and you have two clutches, each clutch acting on, on, the, on each input shaft. With two separate transmission shafts, two gears can be engaged at the same time. To shift, all the car does is switch clutches. And the shift is then only the change of the clutch system. The double clutch concept is the reason why the transmission can shift so fast. The car can be accelerating in one gear and already have the next gear ready to go. It's only possible to do this with an uh, automatic controlled transmission. Being automatically controlled is not the same as being an automatic transmission. 
the Veyron double clutch system is a unique form of manual transmission controlled by computers. Compared to an ordinary manual system, the system is quite uh, more sophisticated with its uh, yeah, brain behind. So it's a computer brain. Just for the controller, uh, control unit for the transmission, it's around four uh, normal laptop computers. The transmission isn't just fast, it's also incredibly strong. And it needs to be to handle the extreme forces generated by 1,001 horsepower. Never before, never ever, in a, in a normal road-worthy uh, car, we have seen a transmission which could shift without breaks in, in the power. So this double clutch technology was brand new, and at this level of power, nobody has ever done a transmission before in a car. Even the Bugatti engineers are surprised by just how fast the Veyron accelerates. It's the first time it's absolutely impressive. Zero to 62 miles an hour, that's 100 kilometers an hour, in 2.5 seconds. You don't know what's around you. Your brain is frozen and you feel just this acceleration for 2.5 seconds and then you will cross 100 mark. That kind of incredible acceleration leads to the next challenge. The Bugatti Veyron will need the most powerful brakes ever built for a street legal production car. The Veyron has massive disc brakes made from high-tech carbon, ceramic and titanium. Each brake disc is handmade by experts in Meitingen, a small town outside of Munich. The raw materials are hand-molded then baked in an oven. Next, they're polished. Baked in a second oven. Drilled, and assembled. The Veyron's brakes work at temperatures as high as 980 degrees Celsius. Normal car brakes stop working at around 700 degrees. But even the Veyron's massive disc brakes aren't enough to handle the car's incredible power. Bugatti engineers face yet another challenge. Stopping a car that's travelling at one-third the speed of sound. Bugatti Veyron can stop faster than any production car in the world. That's because the Veyron has two different braking systems built into the car. We have the mechanical brakes to the wheels, but we have also an air brake. At speeds above 125 miles an hour, hit the brake pedal and the Veyron's rear wing shoots up to a 55 degree angle. It is very helpful when the car is very, very fast. The wing acts like an air brake, 
providing almost a third of the Veyron's total braking power. The air brake alone generates 70% of the braking power of a normal car. Together, the wing and disc brakes have a total braking force equal to almost twice the force of gravity. The Veyron takes less than 10 seconds to go from its top speed of 253 miles an hour to a complete stop. You can brake faster, then you can accelerate. Two point five seconds it needs to accelerate two hundred K and in two point two seconds it already has stopped down to zero, which is a very impressive number, I think. It's uh, amazing. Below five seconds the whole thing. Even more amazing is how the power of the brakes dwarfs the power of the Veyron's huge engine. Deceleration takes about 4,000 horsepower to brake the car from top speed down to zero. In its up position, the Veyron's rear wing helps braking. Lowered, it adds stability to high speed runs. The rear wing is a critical part of the world's fastest car. But to control the wing means creating something so fast, its speed is almost unimaginable. Speed measured in picoseconds, a thousand billionth of a second. This high-tech company in Ludensheide in Germany is where they build a remarkably tiny sensor unit for the Veyron's rear wing. It is the fastest piece in, 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 in that car. The sensor measures the time it takes a pulse of light to travel down a wire, hit a magnet and reflect back as an ultrasonic sound wave. The sensor performance has to be not only correct but also has to be quick enough that the computer system in the car can execute the right angles on the wing as needed. For normal driving, the wing is retracted. Hit 135 miles an hour and the wing pops up to a 15 degree angle. For high speed runs above 230 miles an hour, the wing retracts to just two degrees. And for high speed stops, the wing hits 55 degrees in four tenths of a second. The Veyron adjusts its aerodynamic configurations as it travels. Without the tiny sensor in the rear wing, the car would never be stable enough to hit its top speed of 253 miles an hour. And without the sensor, the car could never safely brake at that speed. Without the sensor controlling the wing and the computer knowing the information on the wing and varying the angles on the, on the wing, they would not have been able to do that. Hegemon Aerospace specializes in making parts for jets and rockets. They installed the sensor in the strut assembly for the Veyron's rear wing. Then it's checked on a machine made especially for the Veyron to ensure both sensor and wing work perfectly. The rear wing is uh, a good sample of the combination of automotive and aerospace because this hydraulic system could also drive a flap system in an aircraft wing.
Hegemon Aerospace builds 150 sub-assemblies for the Veyron, including the rear and front frames for the car. They construct the rear frame out of high-strength aircraft-grade stainless steel and weld it in exactly the same way they weld aeroplane parts. All welders doing any kind of work on this car are certified aircraft welders. It takes a lot of time, which is one reason the rear frame is one of the most complicated and expensive parts of the entire car. It takes around about 80 to 90 hour handcraft work to produce this single part here. Hegemon Aerospace also manufactures the Veyron's fuel tank. From the first design to the finish, uh, four years. It took that long because the Veyron's fuel tank needs to pump fuel eight times faster than a normal fuel tank. It takes three days to weld together the fuel tank for the Veyron. Two hundred and fifty different parts. Five times the number in a normal car's fuel tank. There are two thousand five hundred different parts in all the Veyron sub-assemblies Hegemon Aerospace manufactures. Each and every piece, a piece of mechanical art. My favorite piece is this rear frame, the engine mount of this car, together with the rear hydraulic. This is a real fancy part of the car. It's a kind of artwork. Part aeroplane, part car. It all comes together where the rubber meets the road. Until the Veyron, no one had ever made a production car tyre to be used at speeds above 250 miles an hour. Without finding a way to make that tyre, the Bugatti Veyron would never hit its target, a top speed of 253 miles an hour. One of the key parts of building the Bugatti is a car essential often taken for granted. At the end, one of the key points was the tyres. Tyres that would be developed here at the research and test facility outside the small French town of Clermont-Ferrand. It was an extremely demanding technical challenge, you know. There was no tire available on the market, on the market that was able to meet the technical requirement of that car. Tires are usually offered in two different designs. One for the road, one for the track. Bugatti wants one tire that can do both. So we need to develop brand new tires, new tires big tires, the biggest tires ever designed for a sport car. The Veyron's tires are huge, 14 and a half inches wide on the rear wheels. That's nearly twice as wide as a normal passenger car tire. They make each Veyron tire by rolling multiple layers of rubber onto a drum. A standard passenger car tire took almost 30 seconds to be built. This one needs more than one hour. This is a really handmade tire. Each layer must be perfectly aligned and checked with laser beams and a microscope. 
It's another combination of car and aerospace technology. For this tire, we have to put in place very severe control that will meet or exceed the quality standard of an aircraft tire. A set of Veyron tires lasts about 6,000 miles. A set of four replacement tires costs 11,000 pounds. The tires are thoroughly tested by the appropriately titled tire torture machine. This device reproduces every possible force and condition the tire would face on the road or on the track. On this machine, we create forces that exceed, in fact, what is on the track. So it is a real torture for the tire. The Veyron's tires are over-engineered. The torture machine shows that they can safely run at 280 miles an hour. 30 miles an hour faster than the car. But the ultimate testing is done outside. The test facility has 19 different track configurations spread out across 1,100 acres at Clermont-Ferrand. including the world's most sophisticated wet handling tracks. Computers precisely control hundreds of sprinklers. They can replicate everything from a light drizzle to a downpour. And the Veyron, with its unique tires, needs to handle it all. The Veyron tires are shipped from Clermont-Ferrand to Molsheim in France. Here, in a brand new building next to a 150-year-old chateau, is where they build the Bugatti Veyron. In September 2005, Bugatti opens a brand new atelier, or artist's workshop, in Molsheim in France. This is not a typical car factory. It is a unique place where 17 specialists assemble the Bugatti Veyron by hand. For the assembly, we have in total 17 workers. There are some mechanicals, some electrical people, and people for the bodywork. First, they carefully move the rear frame, complete with its wing struts, into position to bolt it to the engine and transmission. The car ends up in three sections. Each sits on columns that rise up from the floor. Their tops are embossed with the Ettore Bugatti logo.
There are no greasy car lifts or jacks in this factory. Here they build cars the way you build an aeroplane. The rear, middle and front sections of the car are slowly pushed together by hand. Hoses and electrical contacts are carefully connected. When they're certain everything is perfectly lined up, they bolt the car together. You have to imagine the rear part is connected to the front part only with 14 bolts. Just 14 bolts, each made from titanium. For me, this car is more an airplane than, than a car. In contrast to most cars, there's no frame in the middle of the Veyron. The passenger compartment is built with what's called monocoque construction. Like an aeroplane fuselage, the skin or outer shell is what makes the middle of the car rigid and strong. The entire monocoque middle of the car weighs just 108 kilos, but has double or even triple the strength of an average car body. This uh, complete assembly in carbon fiber, um, we, we are achieving in the, the stiffest and uh, one of the strongest cars in the world. The Veyron is also one of the most tested cars in the world. Before the remaining bodywork is added, the chassis is rolled into a test chamber. The engine is fired up, and for the very first time, the car's huge tires feel the might of 1,001 horsepower. To complete the car, they place handcrafted covers on top of the turbocharger radiators. Aluminium body parts are polished, and then very carefully aligned and bolted to the car. It takes about four to five weeks from the beginning of the assembly of the chassis till the finishing with the polishing and the delivery of the car. Each finished Veyron is then road tested, some of them on the only track in the world where Bugatti runs the Veyron to its top speed of more than 250 miles an hour. One of the most extraordinary car test facilities ever built sits in the woods outside Wolfsburg in Germany. Protected by barbed wire on top of chain link fences. It's Volkswagen's super secret test facility in Aire la Seine. It is not allowed that airplanes cross the proving ground. I think it's necessary to keep these secrets really secret.
Inside the gates sit 60 miles of private roads, including a high-speed oval track with a straight run of over five miles long. We are here in our brewing ground in Eralassin and we have a high-speed oval and that allows top speeds in a very safe condition. The high-speed oval allows the Veyron to hit its top speed of 253 miles an hour. First, a few laps to warm up the car. Then, the driver accelerates into the next banked corner at about 250 miles per hour. Here, the Veyron is only using 280 horsepower. It needs its remaining 721 horsepower to reach its top speed. When the car comes out of the banked curve and onto the straight, the driver floors the accelerator and hangs on. Warm up everything properly and then go to the curve and then after that, the next straight, you do it. At 253 miles an hour, the Veyron covers more than four miles in 60 seconds. At maximum power, its turbochargers suck in the same amount of air in one minute that the driver would use to breathe for four days. At top speed, the Veyron gets less than three miles to the gallon. At that rate, its 26-gallon fuel tank runs dry in 12 minutes. Top speed is measured by a GPS unit on the dash. It's calibrated for Europe, so the magic number is 407 kilometers an hour. That's 253 miles an hour. You have to learn when, what, how, take the steering wheel, center of the road, full throttle and wait. The car could actually go faster, as much as 260 miles an hour, but it's computer limited to 253. Above that speed, stability could become a problem. Every car, every single car is driven 500 kilometers to find every single little squeak and rattle and defect. After the final road tests, each car returns to the workshop. It now sits in a special light tunnel. Here, the car is inspected and polished for at least two full days. Perfect is not good enough. <laughs> I think that, that gives you a little bit of the, of, the, of the way of thinking you need to do a car like that. Finally, each new Veyron is wrapped inside a protective cover for shipment to customers around the world. People who want to own an extremely rare piece of mechanical art. Part aeroplane. Part car. The Bugatti Veyron is a unique piece of engineering. An extremely expensive toy that can travel at over 250 miles an hour. <laughs>